So about two or three years ago, I woke up and decided to disassemble my first RC lawnmower and see how I could simplify the design. Around that time, I had purchased a MIG welder and I started a new relationship. Back then, my girlfriend, who is now my wife, was renting a home and had a huge front yard, which she had to cut using only a push lawnmower. I was shocked the first time when I saw the size of the yard, so I figured, since I know a thing or two about building RC lawnmowers, why not at the same time ease her struggle and add a smile to her face? So if you remember my first RC lawnmower I built, you will notice quite a few different things with this version. First, this version does not have any solar panels mounted on top. My reason behind that was, again, due to the size of my yard, the batteries usually last long enough to cut my entire yard. So charging the batteries by plugging them into an inverter hooked to my solar system, for example, would suffice just fine. Additionally, I was looking for ways to reduce the amount of hardware and components. Second, there aren't nearly as many bolts used in this design. For the first RC lawnmower I built, I knew little to nothing about how to weld steel, which added many man hours to the overall project considering I would have to drill one or more holes to connect two or more pieces of steel together. Third, I gave it a different paint job. I really don't have a reason for the color choice. It was more of a personal preference, and I think it turned out great. Lastly, the back wheels I used were more of a test to see if I could give the lawnmower more traction when climbing hills, but I soon realized due to the speed at which the motors rotate when making a turn, I ran into issues with the tires leaving patches in the lawn. I believe if I make a version 3, I would balance out the weight some and install a speed controller of some kind since the motor controller is very sensitive to the transmitter's controls. So I reduced the amount of switches on the back of this lawnmower from three to only two. Flipping the bottom three-way switch upward turns on the motor control circuit. And if I flip the switch to its down position, I can charge the two 12 volt batteries in the battery compartment. I also added an LED light to let me know if the lawnmower motion controls were receiving power. I moved the 24 volt battery voltage meter to the top lid of the battery compartment. It's a bit hard to see in direct sunlight, but I think if I install some type of display cover, that would probably help fix the issue. On the right side of the battery compartment, I installed a primary power disconnect from the 24 volt battery supply in the event of an emergency. You can also notice from this angle the charging port I installed to charge the two 12 volt batteries. On the top of the gray box is another prototype idea which houses the parallax board which is used primarily for assisting with translating the on or off signal received from the controller to turn on the electric lawnmower. The primary difference with the parallax board and the board used in the first lawnmower is that the components are permanently soldered to the board. This type of board is useful if you have finalized your circuit design. I also used a 15 pin quick disconnect plug this time around in case I ever needed to quickly remove different components from the RC lawnmower. I didn't end up using all the pins or wires, but again, this was more of a prototype build as well. To turn on the lawnmower is very similar to the first RC lawnmower. By flipping the top switch upward on the back of the lawnmower allows the solid state relay inside the gray box to close and allow the lawnmower to be turned on after I flip the top left switch on the controller. On top of the lawnmower is another quick kill switch to stop the lawnmower in an emergency situation. This switch disconnects the 36 volt power supply in the lawnmower from the rest of the circuit. Since space was limited on the back of the lawnmower, and since there are no solar panels mounted on top, I decided to move the voltage meter for the lawnmower's internal batteries to the top of the lawnmower cover. As for charging the 36 volt power supply in the lawnmower, I simply thought why not store the adapter inside the lawnmower so it's always there when I need to plug it in. For now, I've just simply zip tied the adapter and tucked away the cord but a bracket or cable mount would be a better long-term plan. The lawnmower height adjustment can still be used and the original lever is still attached. 
Currently only height positions one through three can be used, but with some slight modifications to the frame design, I could probably fix that issue. On the very top of the lawnmower, I placed a cell phone mount I purchased from Walmart, which the idea I had was since I own an iPad and an iPhone, why not just use FaceTime between the two to wirelessly transmit video? The video quality is much better than the previous RC lawnmower due to the high resolution camera on the iPhone as well. As for the cutting quality, I saw similar results to the first RC lawnmower, which is expected considering I used the same electric lawnmower. As I mentioned before, I would not recommend the tires used on this version, but at some point I might put the old turf tires back on. Since some of you may be wondering what's under the hood, I figured I'd give you a sneak peek of the main electrical components. 90% of these components were used in the previous RC lawnmower, and the circuit layout is almost identical minus the solar related components. Over at greentechtown.com, I will provide a list of the main electrical components used, and I will also provide a 3D SketchUp file that has most of the dimensions included for the metal framing. Usually I would create a DIY video on my process building the project, but most of that footage was lost over the last few years, so I apologize for that, but I will try to answer any questions anyone may have regarding this RC lawnmower. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this video, and please don't forget to connect with us on social media, which the links can be found below. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.